y'all, Terry Gigi here. Uh, my grandkids just left last night. Luke and Layla were here for a week. And as you know, Lorelai was here, well, if you see Instagram, she was here the week before. So we've been super busy. Uh, but I have a few days that we're not gonna be, we're gonna be home alone, just the two of us. And I wanted to do a couple of videos to have. Um, and today's video is going to be a, I'm gonna share something personal that I made years ago when I was going through a really difficult time. And I think it can be life-changing. I know at the time it really changed my perspective about what was going on. Um, and I ran across it the other day and I haven't seen it and I haven't looked at it in years. I knew where it was at, but I never really opened it because I have it tied with a little bow. And um, it's an art project, but you can do this on a piece of paper. You can do it full force like I did. Um, it was with a group called the Brave Girls Club. I believe it was the Brave Girls Club. The leader is Melody Ross. She's an artist. She's had, she used to have a lot of stuff on the shelves in, you know, Hobby Lobby, Joann's and stuff like that. And uh, she's also a storyteller and book author, blah, blah, blah. Well, she had this club back then. I believe it was the Brave Girls Club and you could take classes. Well, back then our family had been, was going through a extremely, extremely difficult time. The only way I can describe it is you have this nice, happy family of five, three kids, two adults. Everything seemed fine and wonderful. And just picture an atomic bomb being dropped in the middle of your house, and then you had to pick up the pieces and put them all back together. It was horrible. Now, some of you were watching me back then uh, when this happened, and I never shared it, I never will, but I did a, some videos about it back then of how to try to cope in a difficult time, but that's when I was in the middle of it. There's still repercussions today, don't get me wrong. I continue to pray one word with the Lord for this, for my little family who's now grown and there's grandkids and their spouses, but the word is restoration. I'm praying for full restoration of my family unit and that so much has happened good. So much has happened. We're really close to what I feel like would be full restoration, but sometimes I think I'm thinking that that means back to the way it was. And obviously nothing goes back the way it was. Nothing goes back the way it was because things change, everything changes. So I was thinking about that when I came across this and I was thinking about today's times that we're living in. You know, between 2020, the riots, COVID, just all the weirdness, um, everything that's been going on and then continues to this day. I think sometimes we can lose our perspective and only look at today, only look at the economy right now, only look at, you know, your 401k right now, you know, and, and, and you begin to forget that there's a past when things weren't like this and that there's a future when things won't be like this. You have to keep it in perspective and not marry yourself to these times. These times are weird. They're not normal. So you have to keep perspective in it or you become weird with it and you become part of it, sort of. I try to stay back with a long lens and see what's going on and then just try to make sense of it with, with God. So let me share with you this little project and maybe this will make sense to you what I'm trying to get across. Um, it's called a timeline. You're making a timeline of your life. It is very, you get very introspective and you, you learn a lot about yourself if you've never done anything like this. And you, you'll see, you'll see, I'm gonna share it with you. And remember, you can do this in any way you want, but how Melody had us do it in that class, and I don't believe it's available anymore, you were building yourself a timeline on, it was, this was actually like manila folder cut up to make it hard. And then I had these little, these little card things. You can buy a, a, a little thing of them there. Well, they're this size at Hobby Lobby or anywhere with different, all different colored little, 
almost cardstock little uh, paper. So that's what, this is just the thing I put on the back when I tie it. But let me just show it to you and you'll get the gist. <laughs> Five minute intro, right? Okay, here I am. Uh, and I used a Mod Podge on a lot of this. But here I am, I don't know, I think I'm in kindergarten. I remember this dress my grandmother made me. It was a jumper and had a little blouse under it. Dig the bangs. And right here it just says, this is my story. Now, the class I did had a lot of clip art with it. So that's where all this the little birds and everything came from. But again, print some stuff on, off, offline, draw it yourself, whatever you wanna do, if you wanna be decorative about it. And then you mod podge over it. This was just a printed on a piece of regular paper on a printer. I survived this long. So what you're doing is you're making a timeline of your life. And let me show you what I mean. Here is my first two pages. It starts in 1961 when I was one year old. And then this goes to 1970. So this is 10 years. And so here I am, and I wanted to um, remember who I was when I was a little girl. Who was I? What do I remember about the kind of person I was? Well, I loved God and believed in God, but I was very pensive. I was shy. I was kind of afraid for no reason, but that's just how I felt. I kind of looked through a, a glass half empty kind of a person. And this is just me represents that looking out. And that's till I was five. And then this page is, uh, you know, six to 10. I was still shy. I was still kind of, I don't know, maybe most kids are like this when they're little, but no, no, because my grandkids weren't like this when they were little. I had friends, I had little neighbor friends that I remember. Um, I became a Christian right here at 1969. So down here, you can mark very big moments in your life, okay? So I became a Christian in 1969. I remember it like it was yesterday. And then here it says, I learned how strong I was here. And that kind of talks about going to school, being in school, making friends, um, I was sort of barely coming out of being really shy and quiet. So that was years one through 10. Now here's, um, I was 11 through 20. That's these years. I found an old, um, I found a bulldog online and I cut it out because that was junior high, Washington Bulldogs. Um, I've loved peace signs back then. We bought, um, in the fourth grade, my parents bought a big, nice house, and we moved out to where I grew up for the rest of, till I got married. So we had a really nice house, and it says, I felt confident and content here. Here's high school. This was our high school logo. We were the Conroe Tigers. I loved my stereo and playing records, and I loved boys. I just thought they were the greatest thing. You know, I discovered boys and I discovered my voice and all kind of things, and I became kind of crazy. And then I went to college here, 1978, nine, and here is 20 years old. And so what I wrote, what I cut out to put here, because they had a lot of uh, little sayings, it says, I had no idea what I was doing here. <laughs> That's college. So, I promise this will make sense. And then here's 1981. So this is the next 10 year, or 10, 20 year, 10 years. Um, I got, I became a wife here in 1981. It says Mr. and Mrs. Scott Reynolds. Um, life was good. We were living out in West Texas, you know, everything was okay. And then 1984, it says, I was on the top of the world here. So there's a heart there, that's marriage. That's my when my first child was born. And this was probably the happiest time in my life. And here we are, here's my next child was born, Wes. And so there's Megan and Wes with me and, um, we had a little Yorkie 
and it says, I felt proud of myself here. Um, and then 1990, and then I had another baby over here. She was 10 years after my daughter, so here's another one. And it said, I felt proud of myself. And those were all good times. And then this is 19, this is the 90s. And then um, we moved to Florida and it says everything changed here. This is when my world went dark, very, very dark but I had to think about it a lot. We still had so many good times then. Our whole family was dark at this time. It was horrible. But here's Mickey and Minnie because we went to Disney World a lot as a family and that was such a bright spot in our lives. But things were gonna get worse. I didn't know that here. And it said, I did the best I could and that was enough. So I'm really now, while I'm doing this, this scenario, and this took a couple of weeks, or I don't know, a week, I don't know. And then we flip over from the 90s to the next year. Still dark, very dark. And it says, uh, what I decided to put here was, every chapter is important. Every part of your life, the good, the bad, the ugly, the sad, the fantastic, um, it's all important. Each chapter is important. And it said um, right here is where it really got bad. And then it says, I was much stronger than I believed I was. Looking back, I have perspective now. And it said, I felt alone, but I wasn't alone. I felt like I was left in this nest with no nobody but I wasn't alone. God was with me. I had family members. I had, although it affected all our families, um, that's that. And then, so that was what, how many years did I consider darkness? 98 to 2005. That's a long time. And then this is the last um, time I did. I stopped this in 2010. This is when I finished this thing. So I did this in 2010. That was 12 years ago, but I am definitely going to move on. But here is what happened here. This is right after the darkness here. The best thing that ever happened to us said, I had the time of my life here and here and here and here, and it would, go, it would go on. And this is when we discovered Paris. I don't know if you can see, but we're standing in front of the Louvre and we got our picture, we took a selfie with a automatic timer in this very spot, like three or four different times we went. We missed some years, which we hate. This is actually probably year two. Yeah. And it says, and here I became a Gigi, Layla was born. And here I became a Gigi again, Luke was born. And it just says Paris. And it says the hard part, the hard parts teach us so much. So when I take my entire timeline, if you look at your life and you are negative about all of it or you only are focusing on the bad, if you do something like that, you can see, I'll start at the beginning. Uh, my life was colorful and happy and good, I'm trying to see, for many, many years. And then the darkness here. Whoops. Ah. And then the darkness here and here. But then this came. And so I need to go back. I'm 11 years ago. No, 2011 to 2022. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do these pages this week. And um, remember these years. And they'll, they'll be much easier now because... Uh, I have my phone with, you know, all the pictures that I can kind of look at and remember what we did and how things were and blah, blah, blah. And I have prayer journals and everything. The point of this is, is to get perspective, is to remember all the times, not just the good times and not just the bad times, but all the times and be reminded all the time. 
that God saw you through the most difficult times. He is still seeing us through. Things are still moving slowly, <laughs> but it's happening. And again, my perspective had to change that it doesn't mean things are gonna go back to the way they were. They probably never will because we're all different people. We're different ages. We have different, we have new family. I mean, everything is kind of different. So anyway, I really enjoyed this project. I encourage you to do something similar to this. And start when you're, I think, one year old, because what can you remember before that? But um, I also have heard before that the person you were when you were a child might be the person you were kind of meant to be, you know, and then life happens and you change. I don't know if I really agree with that, but I do think we're born with certain tendencies, personalities, and we can, um, we can certainly tweak that, make them better, um, you know, make the bad uh, characteristics that we feel like we have get smaller and the good characteristics that we're working toward get, get bigger. And so that is kind of what this video is about. Um, it's just getting perspective. And in today's time, when you do this, you can see it wasn't all like this. Your life wasn't all about 2020, your phone, the news, all this stuff that's weighing us down. It wasn't always this way. And it probably won't always be this way. You know, I was upset about the gas, or Scott was really upset about gas prices. And I said, don't you remember this happened a couple of years ago? And then it all went down and we had this really funny bet. I told him that it would get down to $1.99 again. And he said, never in a bazillion years, it's $4 a gallon. This is, I don't know how many years ago this happened. Um, and then guess what? One day it went to $1.99 and he could not believe it. And here we are again, the same scenario. And I said, you know, it, it comes and goes. I remember in 19, in the 70s, um, 75, 76, there was the gas crisis where we didn't have enough and you sat in line for hours to fill your tank. I remember that because it was hot summer in Texas and I would go fill, just because I had my license and I wanted to drive, I would volunteer to go fill my parents' car and they would say, of course you can, you know, because <laughs> they didn't want to stand and sit in that heat, you know, because you couldn't keep your car. Point being, things always change. Life is like this. And when we quit believing the lie that if we do the right things, believe the right things, act the right way, make the right decisions, go, 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 produce, 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 that you will get to this point somewhere up here. It just doesn't happen like that. There's no guarantees. You can work so hard and you are, you know, the guy holding the slow and go sign during construction on a road and you may never go anywhere else with your job. There's no guarantee. You can have a fantastic job and get fired, laid off. They don't need you anymore. You know, you can get blamed for something that wasn't your fault. So all these messages we're getting from uh, social media um, to be productive all the time and do these things, it's a lie. It's, yeah, you can get, you can achieve a lot by being productive. Of course, you're not supposed to sit around and do nothing all day. That's worse. But there's no guarantees. We've got to take one day at a time and keep our perspective in everything. Quick story, perspective. July 3rd, Scott and I's air conditioner went out in the house. And so obviously we couldn't get anybody out here. Uh, the third or the fourth or the fifth or the sixth. And um, we have a home warranty, so we we're trying to work with them. They said they didn't have any worker, they couldn't find anybody in their network for three, um, three to four weeks. Well, we couldn't live like this for three to four weeks. So we bought an air, con uh, day two, Scott went and bought a window unit. We put it in our master bedroom and we kind of lived in that part of the house and it was 88 degrees in the rest of the house. We had fans going, it was awful but we kept our perspective. You know, we have a very nice, 
cool room for $250. We had a nice cool bedroom, bathroom, and laundry room. That, that was our area back there. A TV, internet, you know, the whole nine yards. We had everything we needed. And we could run out here in the kitchen and cook and go back, you know. We set up a little table where we would eat. It was really, <laughs> we had it all set up back there. But the thing that was causing us to lose our perspective is that we were supposed to have Luke and Layla for a week. And we just couldn't bring them here in this heat. And all of us try to cram in our master bedroom and sleep and hang out all the time that we weren't out doing something. So we try to keep our perspective. And sure enough, well, it's a long story. Um, it's fixed. We almost got scammed. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's been a crazy week. But we got to go get Luke and Layla only one day late because it got fixed the night the day that we were supposed to pick them up, we, it was the next day. We had a great, great time. And the, the, their air conditioner in the whole house was working and it worked the whole time they were there. Even the guy that, guy that told us that we need a new unit and what he did would only fix it for probably 24 hours. And he was pressuring us to buy a new air con oh, system. And we didn't. So we're just riding it out right now. It's working great, so we'll see. But uh, there were other reasons we think he was trying to scam us. Very pressurized sales tactic, trying to make have us make a decision at 8 o'clock at night because he needed to get a crew together for the next morning to put in this $10,000 air conditioner. Yeah. So perspective. Again, we could have really been at each other's throats. We could have been, I don't know. I'm just trying to say that we got to keep, Keep ourselves from getting upset because when you get upset today, there's all the other stuff around it. So it's like you have no reserves to deal with issues now. It's a little harder right now. Um, but we have to remember, it wasn't always like this. It's hard, honestly, y'all, it's hard to remember 9-11, how close our country was, how we were all together. We were all waving flags. We had flags on everything. We wore flag pins. We had flags on our antennas on our cars. Do y'all remember all that? That wasn't very long ago. So what's happening now, it has not always been this way. They're trying to make America like this is how it's always been, this horrible place and all these horrible people. When you do this, you're going to see how free you were and how much you accomplished and, and, and how good your life has been. But again, it has ups and downs and that's just, there's nothing you can do about it. So that's all I have today. I hope you kind of understood what I was trying to say and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.